Hello. Um, I'm Qutuf, um, Qutuf Yahya. I work with Locale and it's a Sudanese platform for the arts. We exhibit, design and collaborate with Sudanese artists. And today I'm going to be forwarding a paper or an essay by um, Asir Gadoid called Northern Sudanese Singing 1908 to 1958. Um, the paper is part of the uh, Sudan studies journal by the Sudan Studies Society uh, and it's available on their website. I've provided the link here uh, for you guys to go through the whole paper once I entice you obviously with my forward. Um, who is Asir Gador? Asir Gador is a Sudanese presenter, poet, um, actor and a cultural figure. He um, hosts a show on Blue Nile TV um, that's been running for a little over a decade now called Aghani Mughani. The show is basically like a round table for Sudanese artists or like a jalsa kind of situation where um, the Sudanese artists come together, they tell stories and anecdotes and position Sudanese music um, within history and kind of give refer reference points and, and stories to everything. And Sirgador is incredibly musically inclined. So he's able to give um, all this historical um, reference to the music and one of the genres that they cover on Alani Walani is Haqiba music which is kind of the focus of the paper that I'm forwarding and the focus of this forward. Haqiba music is a genre of Sudanese music that was that came about in the 1920s um, in Umdurman which is the cultural city um, of the Khartoum state in Sudan. Um, the, the genre got its name retrospectively it got it in some time in the 1940s, late 1940s, um, because a radio presenter by the name of Ahmed Hamad Saleh um, hosted a show on Radio Mdurman that was um, focused on this specific type of music that was that was uh, being performed. Um, and he used to carry the records that he played on this um, on this show in a bag, in a briefcase, which is what Haqiba means. Haqiba means bag or briefcase. Um, and so he named his show Haqib Del Fan uh, to present and kind of talk about this this art form. Um, that's how it got its name and how it stuck. Um, the Haqiba music in this photo, you'll see that, like these are some of the pioneers of Haqiba music. We have in the middle here is the uh, Hadj Muhammad Ahmed Sirur. On the far left, we have Karoma, who's a revolutionary figure in the art form. Um, and on the far right, we have Khalil Farah, who wrote the very famous Azafi Hawak song, um, after which Sudan was named, or the song that kind of um, puts, put, um, it puts Sudan in the figure of a woman that was serenaded, and it's 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 this position that we still put Sudan in, and we still refer to Sudan as Azza in a lot of our music, and a lot of this history we can see that comes out of um, Haqiba music still resides with us today. Um, Haqiba music stylistically and linguistically, like in both terms, comes is very closely associated to um, praise or worship music. Um, or what we call Medih in Sudan, which is um, the praise of the prophet, um, which is some of one like one of the earliest forms of, of like musicality in Sudan. So we borrow a lot. Haqiba music specifically borrows a lot from that stylistically, in like terms of the 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 male vocals, the background singers, these the instrumentality itself where we don't really use that many instruments we use the rig which is a tambourine like uh, instrument which is very close to the tar um, which islamically is uh, i guess the only acceptable uh, form of, of music um people then moved on to become like very much um like very well orchestrated with uh, whole orchestras and like um, compositions that make up the music, but um, it's also closely related to, to these praise songs and this these Islamic um, like values in its lyricality, like the lyrics and of and the linguistics of the songs, even the the coupling of or the coupling and the rhyme schemes that they use within the Haqiba music is very similar to that of Medih and that like very smooth transfer from transition from, from Medih to Haqiba, I think gave 
the the art form like a, a sort of transcendence and spirituality that we still associate with the music that still resonates with us as Sudanese people. Um, I'm going to show you guys a few videos, like two videos that compare, Leila. sorry, that compare Haqiba and, and Medih. And these are completely different songs. I didn't pick them because um, I found like some similarities. I picked two random songs just to kind of like bring this idea forward and show you the similarities. I'll point them out after I play the videos. But this, the one I'm playing first is a, is a Medih phrase song. <laughs> things that you'll see carry over into the Haqiba music, which is this initial a cappella um, that comes into play when 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 these musics when these songs are performed and the introduction of the rig or the pod uh, after the a cappella and then the crooning sound of like these male vocalists and the way that they sing and the, the musicality and tone in their voice. I'm gonna play a Haqiba song now and I'll explain just a little bit better what this um, a cappella really <laughs> this um, crooning in the male vocalist's voice, this the softness, this rawness, the vulnerability, it's all, it's, it's all, I think, part of the, the appeal of Haqiba music, and I think it's part of um, why it resonates with us and the Sudanese people very much, and why it's still so much part of our um, like present-day culture. Um, in the paper, he kind of talks about these similarities very closely. He talks about the um, that is, he talks about um, the stylistic choices that people make, how we got to this place, how this transition happened. Like, and he positions um, Haqiba music. Like, keep in mind that this music was was like formed in the 1920s. This is way before independence. This, so he positions this music within like the Sudanese narrative within the timeline of of like the political scene and how it like it, it moves and it changes and how it grows with that. Um, Haqiba music itself, uh, like in these pictures, you'll see like all these different artists. This is really not even a fraction of, of the artists that uh, sing Haqiba music. And I think the reason that Haqiba music has progressed and maintained and um, is still very much part of our culture is because it's passed down in, in a very generation generational sense and it's passed down in a very visceral sense where the only form of archiving for the song or like the most prominent form of archiving for this genre is is its repetition. Um, so a song by Sayyid Abdul Aziz is sung by Ab, uh, Abdul Sheikh but, and a song by Karoma is sung by Asif Tamtam and all these people and these people are current and these people are and some of these people are pioneers and founders and 
all of their timelines kind of like overlap and their work overlaps and they share the music and they share the musicality and they share the songs. There's no sense of ownership over the songs in, within Haqiba, which can sound bad, but um, there's a direct line of how the music got to where it is. We know who wrote the songs, we know who composed the music, we know who the poets are, we know how it got to where it is, but there's no ownership over the music where that um, it can't be shared and it can't be repurposed and, and, and resung. And, and I think that's why it still holds very, very true to kind of the core of our, our Sudanese identity. I'm going to give you guys a few links to kind of supplement the, the paper, the essay by Sergador. Um, this is a podcast-like. This first link is a podcast-like exploration of music and history in Sudan and positions um, again, positions like the, the musical uh, journey within like Sydney's history. There's also Sounds of Khartoum, which is again a podcast by Sudan Moves. Uh, this is very recent and it also speaks um, to the general uh, Sudanese music scene, but it also speaks to jazz in specific and it speaks to more current and more popular forms of Sudanese singing. And the final uh, link, which is my favorite, is like my way of like introducing you to Haqiba in a very soft core way, which is, this is a Haqiba mixtape, but the, the, the beats are like some fusion hip hop Haqiba music by Samani Haju, and I think it's one of the best, if not the best um, product, like art product or musical product that's come out of Sudan in the last decade. I'll give him that. Um, so that's for all for you to share. And I hope uh, you enjoyed the forward and I hope you check all the links out. And that's me.